Okay, there are six pens in my desk. That's actually not true. But for this problem, it's true. There are six pens in my desk. There are four times as many pencils as pens. How many pencils are in the desk? What did you get? Jaden, you shut the door, Bella. Jaden, what did you get? 24. How did you find that? I did six times four. Six times four. Looking at this word problem and seeing the number six and four, you needed you, you knew you needed to work with those. How did you know you needed to do multiplication? You could have, obviously, if you're just looking at this, you could have said six plus four is a ten. But how would, does anyone want to explain, how do they know you had to do multiplication? Ethan. It says times. So, because it says the word times. Okay, so what if I said, um, I walked my dog six times and my friend's dog three times. How many dog walks did I do? 36? Nine. Nine, right? If I walked my dog six times and I walked Jane's dog three times, how many dog walks did I do all together? Nine. Nine. So the word times can't just, you can't just see the word times and say, okay, I need to multiply. How, what about that sentence specifically lets me know that it's multiplication hardest? Okay, that's the clue. Times as many. Okay? It's the times as many that gives you the clue that we're going to be multiplying some numbers. And then it depends on our, our sentence as to what numbers we're going to multiply. All right, go ahead and open for um, to 8-5 if you're not already there. The deepest part of the Grand Canyon is about 1 and 1 six mile deep. The deepest part of the ocean is located in the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. The deepest part of the ocean is almost six times as deep as the deepest part of the Grand Canyon. About how deep is the deepest part of the ocean? So, what do I need to find out? Go back to the question and find out what about the question is my I need to find out. And Benny? Right. How deep? And um, I'm going to throw in the word about here to remind us that this is not an exact. It's we're working with estimates or approximates. Okay, what information will I need to use? So looking back at our question, it says the deepest part of the Grand Canyon is about how many miles, class? One, 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 one and one six. The deepest part part of the ocean is about how many times as deep? Six. Six times as deep. Did I just get those? Where did I find those numbers? Nicholas. In the word problem. I just looked back at the word problem. How am I going to use these numbers? The one and one six and the um, six miles. What am I going to do with those? Brian? Brian? I'm going to multiply them. One way to solve it is to draw a bar model. The canyon is 1 and 1 6. The ocean is going to be 6 times that. Remember when we did this back when we did the multiplication chapter? Go ahead and put your finger on the M in the model here. Where's the M? The little cursive M like that, the italic M. It's right here, okay? What does this n number represent? The deepest part of what? What class? Here's the canyon up here. Some of you said canyon. It's going to represent the deepest part of the ocean. So in order to find the deepest part of the ocean, what numbers am I going to work with? One and one six and six. And what math function am I going to use? Bella. I'm going to multiply those. I'm going to change my mixed number into an improper fraction. Go ahead and do it on your paper right now. All right, what you guys get as your improper fraction? Seven, six. Seven, six times six. 
Go ahead and multiply that now. You guys know how to do this. Go ahead and multiply it out. What did you guys get as your improper fraction? 42 6. 42 6. We multiply the 7 times the 6, we get 42. The denominator stays the same. Now go ahead and turn this into a whole number or a mixed number. All right, what did you guys get? 7. Right, just 7 by itself. So the deepest part of the ocean is about how many miles deep? 7 miles deep. There we go. Mountains are often measured by the distance they rise above sea level. Mount Washington rises more than one and one-tenth mile above sea level. Mount Everest rises about five times as high. About how many miles above sea level does Mount Everest rise? What do we need to find out? Look back in your question and raise your hand when you know. Okay, Sophia, what do I need to find out? Okay, about how many miles? Go ahead and write it. Looking back at the problem, what information do I need to use? What information do I need to use from my word problem? So one and one tenth, what does the one and one tenth represent? No, not like, what part of the word problem? I'm asking Antonio. Mount Washington. So I'm going to write that so I keep track. And what is the other information that I'm going to use, Antonio? Five miles. Five times as many as Mount Washington, right? What am I going to do with those two numbers, Rachel? We're going to multiply them. Now we're going to go ahead and solve it. We can use the bar model like we did earlier. This is Mount Washington. And in there goes one and one tenth. And Mount Everest is going to be how many boxes, class? Five. Right, because it's five times as many. They need to be connected. And they're very small. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to write that in, but so in each one of these, I'm going to put one and one tenth. I'm using m here. Does anybody have any idea why I might use m? I can use any variable I want. Why would m be a good one, Haley? Huh? For miles, right? I like m because it's the miles. All right. So to find the miles for Mount Everest, I'm going to do. One and one tenth times what? Six. Why six? Five. Five. Okay. Go ahead and change your Im your mixed number to an improper fraction. And what did you get? Eleven tenths. Eleven tenths times five. Go ahead and multiply that out. And what did you get? 55 tenths. 55 tenths. Change it back to an improper fraction. Or, sorry, change it back to a mixed number. What did you get, Sean? 5 and 5 tenths. And who can be nice and fancy and make it a simplified? Nicholas. 5 and 1 half. And I'm actually missing something in my answer. Does anybody know what I'm missing to make it a complete answer? Nicholas? Miles. Right? We should be putting the unit. So five and a half miles. Now I want to make sure I'm, I know that I'm answering the right question. It says, so Mount Everest rises about five and a half miles above sea level. And I need to ask myself, as I should always when I'm doing math problems, does that make sense? Let me go back to the question. It said, Mount Washington is a mile and a tenth above sea level. Mount Everest rises five times that, so is my answer going to be greater than or less than one and one tenth? If here's Mount Washington and Mount Everest is five times that, is it going to be a larger, greater number or a smaller number? Greatest. It's going to be greater, right? Not greatest, but greater because it's going to be once the Mount Washington is small, Everest is going to go taller. So first of all, is my number five and a half greater than one in a tenth? 
Yes, it is. You guys should be able to do that. Five holes is greater than one hole. Does it? Is it reasonable that an answer to one and one, um, one times five is going to give me an answer that's about five? Yes. Are my answers reasonable? So you should always be asking yourself if they sound reasonable. Okay, if I came up with 50, that might not be too reasonable. How did drawing the diagram help you solve the problem? How does doing this right here, up in the top, my um, bar model, how does that help me solve the problem? Okay, Malia, what did you say for how did drawing a diagram help you solve the problem? Okay, so she, and I like how she restated the question when she did her answer. It helps you understand. Does it help you kind of have a visualization? You really like visualize what it looks like? Um, it, and it helps you solve it. Can I solve this problem without doing multiplication? Daniel, how would I do that? Right, I would do it by repeated addition. So I would do one and a half plus one and a half, and I would do this how many times, Daniel? Five. So we would have five and a half, we would add that one, um, or one and a half, we would add it five times, okay? What about, um, my math talk down here asks me, I'm going to erase this, it asks me, explain how you could use the strategy acted out to find the height of the Mount Everest. So that's right here. One of the things I did is I actually did act it out when I was showing you. I did my hands and I said, if Mount Washington is this high, Mount Everest is going to be five times that. And I kind of showed a visual here, but you can do that on paper as well. So if we think about this is sea level and Mount Washington, Mount Washington I'm going to put MW, is this high. And then my visual, I'm going to think Mount Everest is five times that. <laughs> right? Now all of a sudden you see how much five times it might look like, what it might look like, right? So I would say this is one time, this is two times, this is three times. Oh, did I hit five times? No, I didn't. I need to go one more. Five times, right? So I can draw it out to give myself a visual of what that would look like. So I can act it out on paper. I can act it out on my hand when I showed you with my hands. So those strategies would work as well.